Files. Yeah, always Is that other one not working? Oh, oh, there it goes. Okay, I guess we'll get started. Uh, so I'm going to try something different for recording the videos. I'm going to try to record it from Teams directly instead of using the console here. Um, hopefully Teams will be more reliable. Uh, so you have a quiz on Friday. So it's in here, uh, pen and paper. Uh, you can write in pencil if you want to, I guess. So the topics are listed here. So basically it covers up to last Monday, I think. So the lecture on the 29th. Um, so we need to so or more or less everything that's up uh, everything that up to and including the material from assignment two more or less. Um, the relevant notebooks are listed here if you want to know exactly which notebooks um, the that cover the material. Um, there is a quiz or uh, from last term uh, that's been on on queue since day one. So if you go to content assignment and quiz solutions, uh, you'll find last term's quiz. Uh, you'll also find uh, later today assignment one solution, and I guess later on Wednesday or something like that, or Thursday, you'll get the assignment two solutions as well um, if you want to see them. Uh, any questions about the quiz? Yes. Fine. No. So uh, that one's. Um, so the answer is no, it's too complicated to ask you a, well, I think it's too complicated to ask you a quiz question on. Um, so it's basically the basic commands, right? Like LS, cat, uh, maybe WC for word count. Um, so the simple ones, um, and there's only about, I don't know, 10 or so, right? Um, uh, so whatever is covered in the, uh, well, not even whatever it's covered in the commands notebook, really. Um, so I guess whatever's in the commands notebook, uh, and whatever shows up in the notebooks otherwise, but find isn't in any of the notebooks. So um, find won't be there. That's uh, find is an enormously complicated command to use. Um, if you ever look at the man page for that thing, um, uh, it's quite difficult to use. Any other questions? All right, the sample qu the quiz that's there. I mean, that was the quiz from last term. So that's pretty representative of what you're going to see this term. Right? All right, so if there's no questions, we'll just carry on with the lecture. So we were talking about regular expressions. And um, in particular, we we're talking about uh, the meta characters. So the special characters that are used to define a regular expression. Uh, so we saw that the caret and the dollar sign, those are your anchors, right? So those are your start of line and end of line anchors. The dot matches any single character. You've got square brackets where you can define uh, a character class. And then uh, you also have this round, these uh, the parentheses or the round brackets, which define a sub expression. So we're going to look at an example of that in just a minute. Uh, we saw several examples of regular of simple regular expressions here, right? These ones use um, basically simple characters, the character classes, uh, ranges like a through z, the dot, um, and the anchors. So the next part that I need to tell you about are what are called the quantifiers. So the quantifiers are the star, the question mark, the plus sign, and the braces with um, uh, an integer, comma, integer inside the braces. So uh, these four things here are all called quantifiers. So they uh, control the number of times something matches um, in a regular expression. Now notice you've got star, you've got asterisks. Um, sorry, star and question mark, right? And these are the same symbols that are used uh, inside of a wildcard match. Right? You have to remember that inside a regular expression, these two things mean something completely different, right? So these don't have the same meaning as when you're using a plain old um, bash wildcard match, right? So these have these have a special meaning. So the star means matches the preceding uh, element zero or more times. So I'm going to explain exactly what an element is in just a second. The question mark matches the preceding element 
uh, zero or one time. Right, so star zero or more, question mark zero or one. Right. The plus means uh, matches the preceding element one or more times. And then M comma N means it matches the preceding element uh, somewhere between M and N times. Uh, that uh, quantifier there has a few different forms that I'll explain in just a moment. All right, so. By element, I actually mean what's called an atom. So uh, an atom is any single character, right? So the letter A, for example, would be an atom. Right? A sub expression is an atom, so anything in round brackets is also an atom. And then finally, anything inside square brackets is also an atom, right? So any single character, anything inside round brackets, anything inside square brackets is called an atom. The quantifiers, star question mark plus and the braces, those uh, specify how many times an atom must match, right? So it's not an entire string, right? So the quantifiers don't affect an entire string. They affect just the thing, in, just the atom immediately in front of it. OK, so that regular expression there. So remember, star is zero or more, right? That affects the atom in front of it. So it affects the the um, period. Right? Now remember, period means any char any single character, right? So this means any single character, zero or more times, right? So that matches all strings, including the empty string, right? So if you wanted to match any string, um, you would use dot star. So the plus sign means one or more times, right? So zero or more is star, one or more is plus. So if you have dot plus, that means any string that has at least one character in it. Right? So remember the dot matches anything, any single character, one or more times. Right? The question mark means zero or one. So this is uh, any character, zero or one times. Right? So in other words, the empty string, or the string uh, whose length is exactly one. OK, so the next uh, set of regular expressions builds up to matching um, an unsigned or signed integer. OK, so zero through nine, so that's a character class, right? So zero through nine means uh, any one of the digits zero through nine, right? There's no anchors here, so this will match any string containing at least one digit. Right, so it'll match A, B, C, one, two, three, for example, right? Or it'll just match one, two, three. I want to match the one, two, three, not the A, B, C, one, two, three. So the stuff inside the square brackets, that's considered an atom. So I can modify the atom with a plus sign to say that the string I want to match must contain at least one digit in it. Right, so that's starting to look like an integer value. So any digit at least one or more times, right? No anchors, so that will match any string containing at least one digit. Now to match exactly uh, a string that must be an integer number, right? You would want to use the anchors, right? So starts with and ends with. Right? So starts with any single digit one or more times. Right? So that will match any unsigned integer, right? No sign in front, so you can't write plus or minus in front of that thing that it won't match, right? And of course this may overflow and there's no good way to uh, write a regular expression that guarantees the number won't overflow the range of the uh, whatever integer type uh, bash happens to be using, right? You can, quant you can uh, quantify the number of digits that appear, but you can't quantify the range easily. All right, so what if you want a signed integer? So now you have to allow the plus and minus sign. Right? So the minus sign is easy. So this one starts with the minus sign, one or more digits, and then ends, right? So that's any negative integer. If you want to allow the plus sign, right, then you can write square bracket minus plus and then question mark, right? So remember, question mark is there is, uh, is zero or one, right? That's a character class, right? So that means the minus sign or the plus sign zero or one times, followed by one or more digits. Right? So that really is any unsigned or signed integer value. Right? Again, you can't control the magnitude of that number at all with a regular expression, but at least you can control 
uh, the characters that appear in that regular expression. Now, if you don't like the zero or nine, uh, then you can use the POSIX uh, predefined character classes, right? So remember, square bracket, square bracket, colon, digit inside. That's the POSIX character class for um, all of the all of the digits zero through nine, right? And so these two here, as far as bash is concerned, are equivalent. If you're using some other regular expression um, or sort of some some other programming language, you may not have the range like that. Um, Bash allows the range, uh, so you might have to use the predefined character class instead. All right, so that's uh, plus question mark and the asterisk. Right, now, what about the funny braces? So the braces, uh, the general form is the bottom one here, right? So brace one comma three. So the brace, the thing inside the braces matches the preceding atom, right? The preceding atom is the A, right? It's not the XA, right? Remember the preceding atom is any character, anything inside square brackets or anything inside round brackets, right? So that quantifier affects the A only, right? And so this means uh, it starts with X and then has one, two or three A's after it and then ends. Right, so that matches the strings XA, XAA, and XAAA. Okay, so you can, the second number is optional. So let's back up one, right? So XA, brace one comma, means at least one A, right? So if the second number is missing, uh, then uh, that means um, it's one, it's at least that many, and then an unspecified maximum number. Right, so this is X followed by at least one A. And then finally, you can leave off the comma and the second number, and that, that, that forces exactly that many number of matches. So this means X followed by exactly one A. Right, if that one, one was a two, it would be X followed by exactly two A's. If it was a three, it'd be X followed by exactly three A's, and so on and so on and so forth. And finally, the round brackets. So the round brackets lets you, uh, so if you write down some regular expression and then you put it inside of round brackets, uh, that lets you treat everything inside the round brackets as though it were an atom. So that lets you apply the quantifier to the thing um, in front, in the, to the thing, to everything inside the round brackets, right? And so the way to read this regular expression is it starts with, right, the string ABC. The plus sign means one or more, right? And then ends. So this is ABC or ABC, ABC, or ABC, 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 and so on and so on and so on, right? Any number of ABCs uh, repeated, uh, one or more, right? So the round brackets lets you treat a, um, a full expression as though it were a single atom, right? And now the quantifier affects the thing, um, everything inside of the round brackets, right? Or the, the expression that's inside the round brackets. All right, any questions on how the quantifiers work? Yes. Uh, here, that one right there. So actually all of these uh, could potentially overflow. So you don't actually know, um, you don't actually know what uh, what type of int uh, num uh, int type bash is using to represent an int, right? So you don't actually know what the maximum value is, which means you don't know how many digits are in the largest int that bash can represent, right? And this thing here says at least one digit, but an arbitrary number of them after the fact, right? So you can write a one followed by a hundred zeros. That's going to overflow the range of int in bash for sure, right? Because uh, bash doesn't do arbitrary precision int. Um, and so that can overflow, right? So you can determine whether or not something's an integer, but there then you have to do something else to figure or not to figure out whether or not uh, Bash can actually use that as a regular int. Yeah. Don't use that integer because it will work. Oh yeah, so everything's a string in Bash, right? It's not until you try to use it as an integer where uh, things bad things happen. Yeah. Right. Uh, normally you wouldn't run into this problem in Bash. So normally you would not try to write a bash program that could deal with arbitrarily with um, large ints. That would be an unusual uh, application of bash. Yeah. 
Remember, Bash is not really a general purpose programming language, right? It's meant for um, interacting with the operating system. OK, finally, you can uh, combine regular expressions using uh, the vertical bar. So the vertical bar uh, is basically or. Uh, now, the way the vertical bar works is also a bit uh, strange. So you have to uh, be very careful about the rules uh, around with the vertical bar. It's very confusing to figure out how this thing works. Right, so the vertical bar affects two regular expressions, right? So it doesn't affect two atoms. It affects two regular expressions. Right. So you need to consider what is the regular expression before the vertical bar and what is the regular expression after the vertical bar in order to understand exactly what this thing is doing. So if my regular expression is A vertical bar B, right? The regular expression before uh, the bar is A and after it's the B, right? So what does A mean on its own? It means matches any string that contains an A, right? The B on its own means matches any string that contains a B, right? So if you combine these two together with or, right, then this matches any string containing an A or a B, right? So it'll match the string aardvark, and it'll match the string baboon, right? But it won't match the string, I don't know, uh, caught, right? Because there's no A or B in caught. All right, so here's another example. So again, remember the vertical bar affects the entire regular expression, um, combines the regular expression before and after, right? So that regular expression there, the part before the vertical bar is the caret B, right? So remember, starts with a B, right? The part after the regular expression is C-A-T and then ends uh, the string, right? Or ends the line, sorry. So that is ends with C-A-T. So that matches any string starting with a B uh, or ending with a C-A-T. Okay, so here's another one. Starts with a B, right? The part after it is starts with a C, ends in A-T, right? So starts with a B, any string that starts with a B, right? Or any string that starts with a C followed by A-T. So that matches any string starting with a B or the string cat, C-A-T. And then finally, this one here. So that one there is a bit strange. Normally you just write it as, um, uh, you would just write it as caret C-A-T. You wouldn't use the round brackets. The reason the round brackets are here is because of the next example, right? So the next example lets you match uh, bat or cat, right? So to do that, right, you have to remember that you don't want to affect the AT ends, right? So you don't care about the AT and then the anchor at the end. What you care about is the first letter, right? So you care that it starts with a B or starts with a C, right? Then that's all followed by AT and ends the string, right? So starts with a B or starts with a C followed by AT and then end the line. And so that gives you the strings bat or cat, right? Now, of course, you could have written this in a completely different way, right? You could have written this as, um, so you could have written that as starts with and then BC uh, AT uh, ends. Right, which is arguably clearer, but this example here actually explains what's going on if you're using the vertical bar. Right. So remember, the vertical bar affects the regular expression is the combining the two regular expressions on either side of it. All right, so here's a little example here. So there's the string, there's your regular expression, right? What does that regular expression mean? It means, does the string contain an A or a B? So this should be... Yes, it should match, right? Because it contains A's. If you get rid of the A's and put in some B's, it should still match, right? But if you get rid of all the B's, it will no longer match, right? Is not matched now, right? Okay, and finally, we've got some regular expressions here. Uh, and these are all trying to match, uh, well, they look like numbers. Um, and if you sit and stare at them for long enough, you'll figure out exactly what they are. Right. 
So starts with and ends with. Right. So starts with right, a 19 or a 20. Right. Followed by a 0 through 9, followed by a 0 through 9. Right. So this is uh, uh, any value between 1900 uh, and 2099. Right. So it looks like that's a year uh, of some kind. The next one here. So starts with. And there's a whole bunch of stuff in round, in round brackets. OK, so we can ignore all that for now. There's our vertical bar. Right, so part in front, part in back, right? So this is a 0, 1 through 9, right? So 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3 through 0, 9, right? Or, right, 1, 0, 1, or 2. So one zero one 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 two. Right. So that looks like a month. Okay. And now that last one you can probably guess is going to be a day. Right. So zero. One through nine. So zero one zero two zero three through 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 zero nine. Or, right, a one or a two followed by a zero through nine. So one zero, one 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 two one three through one nine, two zero through twenty nine. Right, so there's your zero through nine. There's your ten through twenty-nine. There's thirty, thirty-one. So that looks like a day. Right, throw all those together. You got, you have a date. Okay, if you want more examples, uh, so if you follow the, if you go all the way down to the bottom of the page, there's a bunch of links uh, to sites that tell you more about regular expressions. Right. If you click on that first one, um, it'll take you to this page here. Uh, and then there are some examples here that you can look at. Uh, now, the regular expression language that you're, they're using in this uh, web page is different than the one that we're using um, uh, or the one that Bash uses by default. Uh, so they'll look a little bit strange, um, but there's a whole bunch of them here that you can take a look at if you're interested, right? So there's matching valid dates. This is, uh, what is this? Oh. Matching valid dates, right? There's numeric ranges there. There's how you match a floating point number. The email address is, where's the email address? Uh, not that one. So an email address looks like something that you would want to match with a regular expression, right? So someone types in an email address into a web page, you want to test whether or not it's a valid email address, right? And so I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. There is a standard for defining an email address. Right? So there is a published standard for defining uh, an email address. It's published by, well, there's the official standard there. That's the regular expression for it. Uh, and if that looks like gobbledygook, then it, you're not the only one, right? That looks like a mess. Um, so things that look like they ought to match uh, or be um, uh, things where you, it, Things that you want to validate where you think you might want to use a regular expression, you have to be very careful that that is in fact the case, right? Uh, email address looks like something you could test with a regular expression, right? It's something at something. But the problem is the something in the front and the something in the back can be um, complicated to test for it uh, precisely, right? Uh, the author of this page says that there's a simpler form that works for almost, for almost all email addresses, and it's that one up here. Um, and then he goes on, or he or she, I'm not sure who wrote this page, uh, goes on to give a lot of advice about using this particular regular expression. Yes. The percent sign. The percent sign? Oh yeah, the the, um, the notation that's used here is different than the one that we're using. Uh, so you'll have to go through their tutorial and ask and figure out what they are. So things like, um, where's percent? Uh, is there an easy one to figure out? Uh, the percent sign. Oh, there. Yeah, I'd, um, I'm not sure what that's in there for. You have to read their explanation. I don't actually know what form, what characters are allowed in a valid email address. So you'll have to read uh, the page and figure out what the details are. So obviously, I'm not going to be asking you anything nearly uh, anywhere near uh, that, having anywhere near that complexity, right? We're only going to be using relatively simple regular expressions. Uh, now, the reason regular expressions are um, useful in Bash is uh, that there are many, many tools that understand regular expressions. 
so one of the standard tools is this thing called grep. Right, so grep is global regular expression print. Um, and it's one of very many programs that use regular expressions or are capable of using regular expressions. So what grep lets you do is it lets you search a file or files, uh, or it will read standard input, um, and it will look for lines that match a regular expression. Okay. Uh, we're using POSIX extended, so technically you should pass in minus big E as the option uh, when using grep. Otherwise, it uses regular, uh, the POSIX regular regular expressions instead, uh, not the extended. So the way you use grep is grep. I guess we should use minus E. There are additional options that you can use. Right. There's your regular expression, right? And then uh, one or more files uh, to search, right? And so every line in these files that matches that regular expression will get printed to standard output. Okay, so here's some simple examples. So I'm going to list the contents of my bin directory, of root user bin, I guess. Send that to grep to look for all files uh, that contain uh, the word zip. Right. So this is contains zip, right? So let's do that. Oh, uh, let me uh, hang on. Let me comment out these lines here so that we can look at the output a little more easily. OK, so files that contain zip. And you see that there's a bunch of them. And notice that the zip can appear anywhere in the word. Right? Also notice that um, this particular version of grep is highlighting or uh, coloring the um, matching text uh, for us, so it's easy to see. Okay, so suppose you only want the files that start with zip. Right? So now you need the anchor. Oh, sorry. Right. So it starts with, and then is followed by zip. Right. And so that only lists those files there. Right. If you want the files that end with zip, right, then you, again, you need the other anchor, right, the end of line anchor. Uh, and so this is anything that contains zip and then ends. So if you run that, you get all the files that end with zip now. So there's a little example of using grep. Uh, to parse the output from LS. Right. This is actually surprisingly handy if you are working with lots and lots and lots of files. OK, so another um, another, uh, you, another purpose of use, another purpose of another common use of grep uh, is to search source for stuff. Right, so you might uh, want to search uh, your source code for comments or a particular variable name or something else. Right. If your IDE doesn't do it for you, you can always do it from the command line using grep. Right. So I've got this uh, uh, Java file called all words lookup. It's just some random Java file that I have kicking around. I'm going to look for all of the loops in the file, uh, all of the for loops in particular. So I'm going to ask grep to return all lines that contain the word for. Right. So if we do that, right. notice grep prints out uh, by, oh, if you, the N option prints out the line number. Right, so if you're searching for uh, if you're searching source code, this is handy, right? You can actually find the exact line number where this uh, where this thing occurs. So notice on line 82 we have a loop, right? and on these four here, uh, for examples here, we also have a loop, right? But notice that because our regular expression is simply asking finding all find all lines that contain the word for, uh, sorry, the uh, string f o r, uh, we get back this line as well. Right. So we get back the comment, the line that contains a comment that happens to have the word for in the comment somewhere. So you can, uh, with a little bit of effort, you can uh, improve your search results. Right. So slightly better is to search for the string for. Right. Now this is source code, right? So we know that a Java for loop uh, is for, then there are there is an optional space or spaces, and then there's a round bracket. Right, so I can search for that pattern instead. So I can search for the word for, followed by um, zero or more spaces. Right now, the other thing that you can do in source code is that uh, Java doesn't care what kind of white space it is. So you can be a space, it can be a tab, 
you can put a return uh, character in too, right? So you can go to the next line on the for statement, no problem in Java, right? So you really want to look for any one of the white space characters. Uh, so you can use blank, um, the, char the predefined character class called blank, right? When you do this though, remember it has to be inside square brackets. Uh, so there's two square. So the character class itself is uh, that, right? And so to use it, in a regular expression, you normally end up with double square brackets. So zero or more spaces, right? Followed by uh, one uh, opening parentheses. But the opening parentheses, it has to be inside square brackets, right? Because the round brackets on its own is a sub expression for the regular expression, right? So if you want to match the round bracket, it has to be inside square brackets to define it as a character class, right? Uh, when sorry, when you run that one, right, that uh, no longer prints the line with the comment on it. Okay, if you don't, uh, so if you want to look for anchor tags in your HTML document, uh, if you don't know what HTML is, that's fine. The anchor tags are these are the things that you can click on in a web page. Uh, they start with the less than followed by an A, followed by a space. Right? And so you can search for all of those in your web page. That'll give you all your anchors. If you uh, like playing word games, so in particular, if you like doing crossword puzzles, uh, you can use grep to help you figure out crossword puzzles. So if you have the, this has the spell program, but I don't think that's true. Uh, I forget exactly what thing you have to install to get this uh, file. Um, if you have that file on your computer, uh, then that is basically a giant list of uh, English, well, probably English words on if uh, on your computers, right? So that's basically a giant alphabetized list of words. Um, so you can search that file using grep for some sort of pattern, right? So I can search that word of files for anything that starts with any single letter, right? Followed by AK, followed by any single letter, followed by an S, right? And this is the sort of problem that you'd solve if you're filling in a crossword puzzle, right? What does that give you? Oh, so there you go. So th those are all the words that happen to match that pattern there, right? Uh, and that trivializes your um, crossword puzzle fun. All right, so regular expressions are tough to use, right? They are, they're not hard to use, they're hard to write properly and they're hard to debug, right? Because um, things that look correct um, aren't necessarily correct. The other problem with regular expressions is they match, they may match more things than you want, right? So if you're using this as a filter to get rid of invalid um, inputs, right? It may allow stuff that you think is invalid um, because it's still matching the regular expression. Alternatively, they may be too restrictive, so they may be rejecting things that are that should be valid, um, but aren't. Right. So um, regular expressions are useful, right? But you have to remember you don't want to use them all the time, right? And you really want to think carefully whether or not you ought to be using one uh, before you use one, right? So they are very powerful. They're hard to read and write unless you do it all the time. Um, if you find yourself in need of actually writing regular expressions, right, you have to do a little bit more uh, research than what you have just told you in this lecture. Right? Um, we've only basically just scratched the surface, right? So you only know how to do the very basics of regular expressions. Uh, if you follow those links there, uh, you will find um, a tremendous amount of information uh, related to regular expressions. So if you're interested in this sort of stuff, hit those links there. Um, and uh, I guess have a good time. All right, any uh, questions about regular expressions? The things to, I guess for the purposes of a, so if I was to ask you this on a quiz, right? Um, uh, at most, you would be looking at some, th some of the examples from this table here, right? Um, so you wouldn't be asked anything really, really complicated, right? Um, so you basically, you need to understand what the meta, what the um, basic meta characters are, right? So the two anchors, right? The match any single character, the bracket expression, so the character classes, right? 
Uh, yeah, and you need to understand uh, at least these two quantifiers, right? So the star and the question mark. All right, so if there's no questions, I'm going to move on to the next notebook. All right, so the next notebook is the loops notebook. Right. So Bash, uh, like most other modern programming languages, uh, has loops. Um, now, if you look online um, and you look up questions regarding loops in Bash, uh, a lot of the advice you'll see is that uh, you probably shouldn't be writing a loop. Right. Uh, so the idea is that um, uh, the idea in that is that in sorry the idea in Unix is that you're supposed to find a tool uh, that can solve a problem, right? The bash is supposed to be um, creating a script is meant to be, right? Is meant to be calling certain tools to solve certain problems, right? When you start to write a loop, you're now trying to use bash to actually solve some problem right? instead of looking for a tool to solve the problem. Um, and so there are people who say you should never write a loop in bash, but uh, loops do turn out to be useful. Right? So uh, there are four kinds of loops in bash. So the for loops uh, you're more or less familiar with, right? They work more or less the way for loops work in Python and Java. Right? The while loop also works more or less the way they work in Python and Java. But Bash also has this thing called until, um, which is different. So I don't think so Java certainly doesn't have it. I don't think Python uh, has an equivalent type of loop either. OK, so until and while. So remember how conditions work in Bash, right? So in Bash, uh, conditions are just commands, right? And then the uh, exit status of the command determines whether or not the condition is true or false, right? So if the exit status of the command is zero, right? The command encounters no errors, right? Then the condition is considered to be true, right? If the exit status of the command is not zero, right? So the, the command encountered some errors, then the uh, condition is considered to be false. Okay. So an until loop runs until a test command succeeds, right? And a while loop runs while the test command succeeds, right? So until runs until some condition becomes true, right? And while runs um, as long as some condition is true, right? So until false loops forever, right? Remember, until runs until that condition becomes true, right? False is the command that always uh, sets the exit status to one. So that never becomes zero. That loop runs forever. The while loop runs as long as a condition is true, right? So true is the command in bash that always sets the exit status to zero, right? So that loop is also an infinite loop. All right, now don't forget what we learned in the if statement or in the conditional uh, statement notebook, right? The double square brackets lets you test a conditional statement, right? Double round brackets lets you test an arithmetic condition, right? So if you wanted to write an infinite loop here, uh, it's very easy to do so um, using the square brackets uh, or the round brackets, right? So remember, until runs, until some condition becomes true, right? So A equals equals B. Now that looks funny, right? So this is one's very confusing if you're uh, coming from Python and Java, right? Because that really looks like is the variable A or is the, uh, yeah, is the variable A equal to the variable B, right? But remember in Bash, you want the value of a variable, you need to put the dollar sign in front. So this is really asking, right? Is the string A equal to the string B, right? So that's never true. So that until loop runs forever again. Right. Minus n. So remember what minus n does that tests whether or not a string is empty. Right. So is ABC empty? No. Uh, sorry, not empty. Minus n is not empty. So is that string not empty? Yes. Right. While runs as long as that condition is true. So again, that loop runs forever. Right. Double round brackets. Right, double round brackets tests an arithmetic condition. Right, so until two is less than one. Right, so again, that's going to run forever. Right, or while one is greater than zero, 
right? That's always true, so this will run forever. Right. That's always true. That's always false. Right. So that one runs forever. That one runs forever. Right. So all of those are examples of uh, infinite loops. Right. Now the following are a bunch of examples of counting up to ten, uh, starting from zero. Uh, wait. Count down to zero, starting from ten. Right. So ten, nine, eight, down to zero. Right. So we're going to start with count being equal to ten. Right. And until the count is less than zero. We're just going to print the count and then decrement the count by one. Okay. So not surprisingly, prints out 10 down through zero. Okay. Using a while loop, right? As long as the count is greater than one, uh, greater than minus one, right? Print the count and then decrement the count, right? Notice that you can assign, you can, uh, here I'm using a arithmetic substitution. So remember that's an arithmetic substitution. So evaluate the value of count minus one, right? And then store that result in count. Right here I'm using, this is not an arithmetic substitution, right? This is just asking Bash to do some arithmetic, right? Inside the double round brackets, right? I'm writing count minus minus, so decrement the value of count. Okay, so the uh, an example of a while loop, I think. Do, do, do. Yes, an example of a while loop uh, is going to be the collapse conjecture. Uh, so if you don't know what the collapse conjecture is, um, it's a mathematical conjecture that says if you start with some positive integer n uh, and repeat the following steps, uh, then n will eventually become equal to one. Right. So start out with some positive n. Right. So if n is even, we're going to uh, set n to be equal to n divided by two. Right. So divide n by two, assign it back to n and continue. Right? If n is odd, we're going to multiply n by 3 and add 1 to it. Right? Now that turns n and uh, assign, assign that back to n. Right? So that turns n into a even number, but it's a larger even number. Uh, it's a larger number than it was before this step. Right? So the value of n increases, but now becomes even. Right? Uh, so these two rules just repeat until n reaches 1. The conjecture says that uh, you will always reach one, but no one has been able to prove that this is in fact true. Right? That's why it's a conjecture. Right? Mathematicians think it's true, but no one's been able to prove it. Um, and so people have run computer programs to actually test this. Right? So they've actually tested up to as large as two to the power 68, which is a very large number um, as of 2020. Right. It's probably larger now, but I don't actually know. So if you wanted to write a little bash script that uh, computes the collapse conjecture, it's pretty easy to do. Right. You're going to take in a positive integer n, right? And then you're going to write a loop that applies those two rules until you reach the value one. Right. So here's our collapse script. Right. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to test. Right. Is the number of arguments to the script zero? Right. And if it is, I'm going to quit because I need a value of n to start with. Right. So we print an error message, the standard error, and then exit with a non zero status. Right. If the number of command line arguments is zero, then I'm going to set value equal to uh, one. Sorry, value equal to the first command line argument. I'm now going to test is that value actually an integer? Right. So how am I going to test that the value is an integer? I'm going to use a regular expression. Right. What is the regular expression? Well, it's just the regular expression from the previous notebook. Right. Starts with zero or one, minus and plus. Right. Followed by at least one digit. To test if a regular expression matches, right, it's equals tilde. So if the value is an integer, uh, is that test if the value is an integer? The exclamation mark negates it. So that tests if the value is not an integer. Right. Then it outputs the error message, exits with an unzero status. Okay. So now I know that val is an integer. So I can test is val less than one because I have to start with a positive um, integer value. Right. If it's less than one. Exit with a non-zero exit status, right? 
Notice here I'm using the double round brackets, so I'm using an arithmetic. Uh, I'm using an arithmetic condition here. Right, double square bracket here because I'm testing a string, right? Not an arithmetic condition. OK, so I'm going to print the value and now I'm going to apply the while loop. Right, while the value is not one. Right, if the value is even. Assign value to uh, divide value by two and assign it back to itself. Right, if the value is odd. Multiply value by three, add one, and assign it back to itself. Right. After doing that step, print out the value to see what we get and keep on going. Right. So if you run uh, the Colat script with a value 27, this thing, I mean, this thing looks like it ought to. So if you just look at the conjecture, you would say, well, yeah, it's going to eventually get to one, probably. Right. But you don't have to go very far. Right. You don't have to go to a very large number before you get a huge amount of output. All right, so this is just 27, right? Which is not a very big number. But look at the number of lines of output you get before you reach one. All right, and so it's not really obvious that this thing will always reach one. But it looks like it does. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff going on in that script, right? Testing for the number of command line arguments, right? Printing to standard error, exiting, uh, setting the exit status. Testing for a regular expression, right? testing a arithmetic expression, right, and then doing some uh, writing a loop and doing some basic arithmetic here, right. So that's not a it's not a particularly hard problem, um, but if you can write that sort of thing relatively easily, um, I would say you're doing very well in this course right now. All right, I guess this is a good place to start because I'm going to start talking about for loops next. So we'll do the two for loops uh, that uh, Bash has in the next lecture, uh, and then we'll move on to arrays in Bash. All right, so that'll be for Wednesday. And don't forget your quiz is on Friday. Yeah. How do I stop this thing? Stop sharing, and now I want to stop recording. Um, yeah. You can actually go any of these and be able to uh, say.